Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I wanna to talk to you about how to become a number one sales rep or a top 1% salesperson in the entire country. And these are the five steps to do just that. This is something that I've learned not only through starting successful eight figure companies, but also being a number one sales rep and starting from scratch and figuring out really how to be an unbelievable persuader and a leader in the sales field. Number one, sales is a people's game. The person who is the best people person is gonna be the person who generates the most sales and the most revenue. If you wanna become a better sales rep, you wanna be able to close more deals. It's quite complex, but it's also extremely simple. You have to become better with people. And the thing is, is that everyone is great at communicating, persuading, doing business, becoming friends with someone that's just like them. Have you ever been in an appointment or a phone call or setting a, a scheduling an appointment and you just hit it off with this person and it just feels effortless? And many times it's instinctive to go, man, that was just an easy person. That was an easy customer. That person just wanted it. Sometimes they weren't necessarily an easy sell or an easy person to close, but instead your personalities and your energies matched and aligned, therefore dropping that person's guard, making them more comfortable with you and ultimately respecting you so they can actually give you a chance to actually sell and persuade them with a product or service. So the tricky part is how do you learn how to do this with all types of people? And the first way that you do this is through practice. What I want you to start doing, and this is a simple tactic, every restaurant you go to, every meeting, if you're driving through a fast food restaurant, I want you to instead of just operating on autopilot, being busy, just worrying about ordering your food or eating real quick, I want you to intently focus on winning over the person that you're communicating. I want you to kind of mirror them, look them in the eyes, smile, ask how their day is, and just focus on becoming more likable. Now, whether this works in a positive or negative way, or there's a certain amount of learning curve, I want you to just simply notice, one, how you act, and two, what is the emotional reaction that you cause in the person that you're communicating? The reason why I say to start taking this intently and focusing on it every time you're out and communicating is because your brain is gonna start picking up that data of what moves certain types of people to like you, to wanna help you, to wanna upgrade you at the hotel, upgrade you to first class on the flight. What are these things that are moving and persuading people to do certain things? And many times people go, well, Grant, how do I become good at sales? And they go, well, you can't find out in a textbook. You have to get better with sales by selling. You become a better people person by simply talking to people. So everywhere that you go, just say, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? Hey, I love your tie. Hey, I love this outfit. Where did you get it from? Be authentic, be unique and start communicating with people because when you become more likable, people are gonna be a hell of a lot more willing to start doing business with you. Two, recreate yourself. If you were good enough to be a number one sales rep or the absolute number one percent, whether it's real estate agent or someone in your field, you would already be doing it. That means the current version of yourself, while it has potential, while you have unique skills and God-given talents, you're gonna have to change and recreate yourself. What I would recommend is I want you to act like you are going into a movie as a lead role and you have to create a character. Think about how they choose a James Bond character. They've had probably 15 different James Bond movies with different actors on all of them but they still carried themselves just like James Bond. The way that they fixed their coat, the way that they communicated, the way they smoke, spoke to a female, the way that they handled themselves in intense situations, they all resembled James Bond. They all looked different. They all had different ages. They all had different backgrounds, but they all carried themselves like a certain character. A number one sales rep, while they all act, look, and come from different backgrounds, they all just carry themselves in a certain way. They're the most likable. They have a way with their words and they find a way to make something happen no matter what. They're very optimistic, but hyper-focused and detailed. So what I want you to do is create this character, this elevated 
improved version of yourself. And I want you to kind of strategize, maybe sit in a room, maybe pause this, this video right now and write down on a sheet of paper, notebook or notes of your phone. What would a number one sales rep or the top 1% earner version of you, not me, not your brother, not your friend, what would they look like? What would they dress like? How would they speak? How would they carry themselves? How would they handle obstacles? How would people treat them when they entered a room? What would you need to create to make that version of yourself like you are a movie character? Top 1% salespeople can adjust to any room that they're in. They're poised under pressure and they can handle objections and obstacles and different things that come up in a presentation, in a meeting, when they're dealing with clients, when they're setting appointments, whatever it is, because they're so poised and prepared. That doesn't just happen overnight unless you're communicating with people, becoming a better people's person and grooming yourself to understand body language, psychology, tonality, and the perception that you want to give across to create the ultimate goal of closing more deals and becoming a top 1% rep. Three, discipline. Every time, and, and this is us, We, for example, I, I run a eight-figure solar company and we're in 16 different states all across the country. And it's interesting because typically each week we have a company-wide sales meeting, all the companies on, even some people in operations, and we'll have the number one salesperson of that week or that month talk. And they'll give this whole background on you know what worked for them, what was the secret, what did they do differently? And it's interesting because, you know, many times it's, it's a different person every month. And each time you're waiting for them to say something unique, something different, some secret sauce that no one else is doing. And it's just so unique. But what's interesting is every single time they give the most boring answer you can imagine. And what's interesting is they'll say things like, well, I mean, I'm really just sticking to the script and I'm doing things that, that I should be doing and I'm getting eight hours of sleep. And they give you this boring answer. And we're like, well, come on, man, you got to tell us more. And they go, well, you know, I, I simply just, man, I call like 150 people a day and some days it's really easy to set. And I get three, four appointments and I do really well. Other times it's hard and I just still call 150 people. And I remember this one time we had this guy and Traditionally, we weren't a door-to-door -door company. We would sell remotely over the phone or on Zoom or whatever the case was. And we had this sales rep that was just absolutely killing it going door-to-door. -door. He had no background experience as a door-to-door -door sales rep. And what was interesting, he was setting all these appointments. He was closing all these deals. He was making tons and tens and tens of thousands of dollars a week. And we had all these reps go, man, what is your secret? You know, I've always tried door-to-door. -door. It was so difficult. Like, what are you doing differently? And his answer just blew my mind because it just proved kind of what I'm talking about right here, that discipline always wins. He goes, well, um, I start knocking at 10 a.m. and I typically don't stop till like eight o'clock at night or at least until I have three solid appointments for that day that are qualified and could actually do the, do the deal and actually sign up. And the faces of all of these other sales reps that thought he had some secret hack, their mouths fell to the floor. They were shocked because they're like, oh. And what's interesting is the person who's disciplined, who does the things that they have to do to be successful, regardless of the way that they're feeling, regardless of the way that they're doing that month, what happened with their girlfriend, their boyfriend, their family, how good of a successful month that they're having, they always do what they have to do. This is a question you need to ask yourself. Can you sustainably do the boring, simplistic, mundane task that nobody wants to do, no matter how you feel every single day? Can you do it when you just had your worst week ever? Can you do it when you just made your biggest paycheck ever and life is as good as it could ever be? Can you still do it? To be consistently number one, you have to do the things that everyone else only does on their good days, on your bad days, on the days you just got horrible news, on the days that you don't feel good, you have to always be consistent. Success is doing boring, simplistic tasks at scale. Can you do them at scale? Four, know your numbers. You cannot improve what you do not measure. 
imagine if we were watching the NBA or the NFL and we just played for 60 minutes and we just all kind of debated and talked about, well, who do you think won? Well, who was the best player there? How did that guy do? How could these players get better? You have to be able to measure every single action that you're doing called KPIs. And what you want to do is you want to know how many calls did you make? How many people did you get on the phone? How many pitches that you do? How many credit fails? How many deals did you do? How many deals went into objections and rebuttals? And when they did go into those objections, what were they? And what consistent trends are you seeing? If you cannot measure what you're doing, you can't improve it. For example, many times we had, I'll have reps and they'll kind of get in a rut and maybe they're trying to kind of get back on track and the managers will escalate to me and say, well, you know, Grant, can you jump on a call? He's just kind of going through and I think he needs another voice. And I remember one time we had this sales rep goes, man, you know, Grant, it's like, it's tough, man. I'm just getting so many no-shows and a no-show for you guys that don't know is where you set an appointment and the customer just blatantly doesn't show up or they don't answer the call, which sucks at times, right? But it's part of the business. And he goes, man, I'm just, I'm keep getting no-showed. And if I could just fix these no-shows, man, I'll get my numbers back to where they need to be. And I go, okay, well, let's just first, like, let's pull up your numbers real quick and let's take a look. We pull up his numbers and he still had a 50% pitch, or excuse me, just under 50%, like 48, 49%, just right around a 50% pitch, which is actually better than industry standards. But when we looked at his closing percentage, it had dropped in half. He was just looking for outside sources to justify why he wasn't being successful. But when we actually looked at his closing percentage, his closing percentage cut in half. We said, okay, well, first off, your pitch percentage is fine and that's not the problem. Yeah, it could be better, but it's pretty standard for what it is. But man, look at your closing percentage. What is going wrong? Let's actually look at these audio recordings and look at this. And this goes into step five. You have to get constructive feedback and you have to be able to diagnose with real data, real information, real recordings on how you sound. So what we did is we implemented this technology that tracks and records every single phone call, sales call, appointment set that we're on. And even if you don't have this technology at your company or your business, just record it on your phone and go back and listen with someone that you respect and that understands your industry and sales and has been successful that can just be a simple other voice to diagnose what you're doing. And what's interesting is we said, okay, you have a closing problem. Let's listen to an appointment where you were closing at an extremely high rate and you were the number one sales rep. And then let's listen to this one for 20 minutes with you struggling. We found a key three to four different items that he was just completely missing just because his pitch was slowly changing. They were so minor that he was able to adjust this in two to three days and get back right to where he was and end up becoming the top sales rep that next month and making great money and doing good. But many times you cannot do this. And this is what's difficult. Nobody does these recaps. Nobody has one-on-ones in detailed, detailed, detailed pressure trainings when they're winning, when they had their record sales month, when they just became the number one sales rep, when they made the most money possible. But this is a secret. And this is what's, what's interesting. I know we have a worldwide audience, but you know, for example, in the United States, we have American football. So we had quarterbacks like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and all these incredible legends that are going to be Hall of Famers. And what was interesting, when you hear quarterbacks that weren't successful, which is a very complex position that takes a lot of mental aptitude and uh, process and preparation, the best of the best in the league watched more film than anybody. And when you study people like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, they were nuts. They were crazy when it came to film. They were obsessed with the smallest of details. And then when you see people like Jamarcus Russell, who had could throw a football 70, 80 yards on his knees, that was a first round draft pick that had more talent than anyone could ever imagine. They used to trick him. So what was interesting is the coaches, when he went to the Raiders, his rookie year, they thought, they said, man, this guy is not watching film. He just doesn't know what's going on. So they purposely gave him tapes that had absolutely nothing on it. 
And then they asked him the next day, they said, hey, what did you think about the blitz on in, in the middle of the, the film when you had those linebackers blitzing and this happening and that happened? They asked him like a pretty simple question when it comes to football terms. Hey, what did you think of it? And he just started lying and rambling about a bunch of nonsense. And they said, Jamarcus, there was nothing on those tapes. We just wanted to see if you were watching film. And you took someone who was so much more on paper talented than a Tom Brady or maybe a Peyton Manning or someone else, but they didn't prepare and go through things like a true champion would. Look at the difference in the result in their careers. You have to be willing to do what other people aren't to achieve the things that everyone wants, but almost nobody can actually achieve. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you loved it, make sure to like and subscribe and put on notifications for upcoming videos. I hope you guys have an incredible week and I'll talk to you guys soon.